Okay, so as a forewarning, this lesson and demo is going to be focusing around finalizing your drawings and setting everything up to print. So if your elevation views, your floor plan, your foundation, and most likely your building section is the one that you have the most work to do on because I only introduced kind of how to start it in the last video. So if you do not have those videos or those drawings finished, now would be a good time to pause the video, finish them up, and then come back to setting all of your drawings up for printing. Um, so I have now everything is what I believe is done. I did change some things around from the original videos that I had done. So like I changed my window tags and my door tags. If you wanna leave yours the same way that you have them currently, that's fine. Um, I need to change some other tags as well. So for example, let me just change this because this will be sheet 202 and we'll go over today, especially what like things like this mean. Um, in a set of plans but I'm just making sure you know that I have all of my annotation markers see I'm missing a dimension up here so let me switch myself back into the dim one and so now would be the best time to look through the sets of plans that are up on as you learn and just make sure that your plans closely as closely as possible match or as close as you feel you can get really you should want to try to make them identical but as close as you can get to what I have in those plans onto yours I also last week put a another version of the building section up or not last week but for I guess this week for yesterday I put another version of the building section up to help make it maybe a little easier to look at and understand um, make sure you've got all of your spot elevations, any dimensions you may need as well, um, your north arrows on just your plan views. I am also missing, let me delete those two, not that they would make too much of a difference, but I am missing my, why can't I think of words today? I'm missing my graphic scale in all of these, so I'll show you quickly how to make a graphic scale and copy it around, and then we can get into um, model space versus paper space and alignment and things like that. So I'm going to go into the A Anno layer, and I'm going to just make a line. I'll start it by just drawing it right underneath this one, and I'm going to go one foot over. Um, one foot down then i'm going to go two foot over one foot up then i'm going to go four foot over one foot down and then eight foot over one foot up or i d accidentally did one inch so let me control z one foot that's 11 Come on, DB, there we go. And then I'm just gonna close all of these off. So I'm just using the space bar to just kind of shortcut myself out of the line tool and back into it. Because since line was the last tool I used, if I just hit space, I can go straight back into it. And then I'm gonna make a line right down the middle. So I'm gonna shift right click midpoint. And now I'm going to use the hatch tool using a solid fill to just kind of fill it in with a little checkered pattern. Um, and you could do these kind of at any level necessarily that you kind of want to. So I usually do a one foot and then a two foot and then a four foot and then an eight foot and leave it at that. The way they would get labeled with text. So now I'll go into the text tool. And I'm just going to make a singular text box that says this is one foot. And I want it to be larger than 316 because that's going to be very tiny. 
So I'll say four inches for the size. Even then, that's still way tinier than I wanted. Well, because it didn't do it at four, that's why. There we go. And I'll just move it over a little bit. And then I'll use the copy tool to put another label here, here, and here. Now, this might not look exactly like the version on the original copies, but this would still be a correct one. So if this is one foot, this right here would be three feet because it's one plus these two. So then this would be one plus two plus four or seven feet. And then seven plus eight, this right here would be 15 feet. So sometimes that's why you'll see it as just a one inch one and then another one inch so it can get labeled as two. Um, so this entire thing, and we can even confirm it, from one edge to the other is 15 feet. So this is one way you can do your graphic scale or you could do it where it's just even numbers instead. I'll just leave it as this. Highlight the whole thing. Another helpful tool that we could use for kind of moving things around since I've got patches, lines, and text here is I could use the group command to just now make it that all of these act as one piece. So it's similar to blocks, but it's not content that I can copy and paste into other ones as easily like with blocks. And I can't use this insert tool to insert it around like a block. And then I'm just going to copy it and I want this on every single one of my drawings. So for my base point, I chose, whoops, let me come back up here. I chose that as the reference. So that way, as I copy it onto my other ones, I can just easily place it based off of that same point. So it's going to be on all of my drawings. It's going to show up in the exact same spot. It'll just make it look a little bit nicer, a little bit more neat little bit more intentional in all of my drawings. So you want to make sure you have a graphic scale on every one of your drawings. Whether or not you do it exactly how I do mine, you could even go online and find a graphic scale block and copy and paste it into your drawing. Whatever makes you happiest. So now I've got everything in my drawings ready to go to set up for printing and I am going to start setting up my viewports with, whoops, I almost dropped my notes. So as we saw in the building section, we have paper space right here. Like I said, in a very blank AutoCAD drawing. So if I start a completely blank AutoCAD drawing with no template at all, it's just labeled as like layout one. And we have layout two as well. And you can change these and alter them, add title blocks to them, so that way you don't have to do it every single time. Um, but in our template file, we already have a title block with some stuff already set up. So if I right click on 11 by 17, I can just take a look at the page setup. So I'll go to page setup manager, and we're gonna look at the page set of details for it. And I got a warning that I was expecting that this plotter cannot be used because it doesn't exist on this drawing. So a plotter is just a fancy drafting term for a printer. We just call it something different so that this way we can feel special, I guess. <laughs> um, and it's saying that the plotter I originally named, the printer I originally told it to go to, doesn't exist on this computer. So I'm just going to click OK, and then I can change some things around. So right here with the plot style table, um, we want it set to Tech 1728 AutoCAD CTB. I'll show you how to install that next time around. But right now, when you have that set, it probably has a little yellow triangle next to it with the exclamation point, kind of as a warning. That, that plot that plot style table or that color plot table 
doesn't currently exist. That's okay because we are going to install it, but that's what we want to have it set as. For our printer name, what we're going to do is we are going to set it as a, as a print to PDF which essentially is going to print it out or save it as a digital printout. So we actually don't need a physical printer. So that's for me, that's what all of these ones are. These are just physical printers that I have um, either like in my room or that I can print to at the school. The easiest one to kind of work with that I found for print to PDF is this DWG PDF one. It's installed by default in AutoCAD and it's the easiest one to work with. For your paper type, you want to leave it set as this 11 by 17 full bleed. For what to plot, we want it to do a window and we can even check that what it's doing essentially is printing from one corner of the page to another corner of the page, which is what we want it to do. For plot scale, we're not going to have it just scale to the paper size itself. We're going to leave it set at that. We're going to leave landscape. We're going to leave center to plot. Most of these should be things that already were set up in the template file. Um, and I'm just going to change this over to ACAD, the regular one, so you can then, if we click on preview, you can see what I would see if printing out, or what you would see rather when printing out. So we can see that sheet of paper with our title block, our viewport, but notice how that big black box that we see in AutoCAD, we don't see on the print. And that's because that layer is set to not print out. We can even see here too that like this a anno def point layer, how I told you that that's not a, a non-plotting layer, it's not showing up here in this list of line types. Same with the viewport one, because those are set to not print. Um, now, once we have the color plot table installed, then that's when those different line weights get assigned. So everything just prints monochrome, pretty much black and white, but really just black, except for the exception of our solid fill gets printed light gray versus our regular hatches get printed black, just very thinly. Um, so that's why I've been harping on so much about layers. That's why yet last lecture, I wouldn't shut up about layers. They, they do have an importance to them of why we want to make sure that we're using the correct layer is because ultimately we do want our drawing to be black and white. Let me just hit escape to get out of preview. Um, yeah, um, so then I'm just going to click OK to finish up the page setup. Like I said, everything should be already set up. You probably need to change that printer name, but then everything should be kind of good to go. So I have here my page, my title block, almost ready to go. So what you're going to do is just double click on some of the text boxes. It will be easier to set these up the first time around rather than go back and do this each time. So you'll double click on the text box. And for this one, the only thing you're going to do is in that top line, you're going to change it to your major. So if you're interior design, architecture technology, construction management, maybe you're an undeclared major, whatever your major is, this is where you'll type it in. So you'll just replace it here with, you know, like construction, whoops, might help if I spell construction right, management. Tech 1728 is the course name, architectural graphics is the course name, so you'll leave those alone, you'll just put your major there. For exercise, we're just going to rename this exercise CAD, since we're not having it in three parts. We'll just call it exercise CAD. Notes we'll leave alone. For your name, your name isn't going to change each sheet. So we're just going to change that to be whatever your first, your last name, comma, your first name. The date also is going to be the same for all of the sheets. So I'm going to change it to the current time and date just because it's easy for me to see in the bottom corner. So it's 2021 slash a March, not April 21st. The scale, I already have it set here. And for pretty much all of your drawings except your cover sheet, 
and then maybe any extra credit drawings you're adding in are going to um, those are going to be ones that may have a different scale but every other drawing is just going to be at a quarter inch equals a foot so we can leave that alone the drawing title so this will change for our foundation plan for our floor plan and everything so I'm just going to leave this as this kind of placeholder for now and then our sheet number is also going to change based on all of our drawings. And there's different parts to the sheet kind of designator or number itself. So the first part is that letter on the sheet, which is what we call the discipline designator. So that first letter on the sheet name says essentially, what is this sheet? kind of what family of drawings does it sit underneath. And so A stands for architectural. Actually, let's go through them in kind of order that they would typically appear in a set of plans. That's better. So one that you might see just kind of as an outlier is COV. And that just means that this is the cover sheet. It means that this is just currently the sheet that's on the cover of the whole thing that ties all of the sets of plans together. It has kind of the pretty renderings and all that stuff going on. Next, you may see a designator of G, which stands for general. And generals sheets are like your sheet list. So it might have what we'll just have on our cover sheet is our sheet list, but it just will have kind of a reference of on what pages can you find what drawings. It might have a legend, it might have a code summary. You could find a couple of different things on a general sheet if that's going to be included in a set of plans. Next would be C, which stands for civil. And civil sheets are things like site plans. So anything that is kind of being taken care of by the civil engineer, things like that would go into your civil plans. Next in a set of plans would be S, which stands for structural. Um, so this would be things like our foundation plans, um, maybe our floor um, framing plans things like that, anything that's about the structural integrity of the entire project or house, those would go under the S designator. Then you'd have A, which is architectural. And this is where we have floor plans, elevations, sections, um, even like large scale details, lots and lots and lots of different stuff would go into the A sets of drawings. So that's where the meat of kind of all of your plans are going to be. And then we might have plans as well. That's electrical, which I feel like is pretty straightforward of what would be under the electrical designator. It would be your electrical plans. And then plumbing, which also pretty self-explanatory I feel like of what would go in there. There's other types of um, discipline designators too other than these ones so like for instance you could have I for which whoops for interiors you could even have um, L for landscape but in my opinion landscape plans probably would fall under some of the civil stuff you could have equipment plans, you could have lots of different types, you could have, um, if you have like geothermal going on around there, you'd probably have like a G designator in there as well for geothermal stuff and things like that. Um, but really, most sets of plans are going to just fall kind of under these different categories. So that's where just that first letter in the set comes from, is just kind of what discipline do these drawings fall under. After that then is going to be a series of three numbers. Um, so if the first number is just a zero, it means that that is just kind of a general sheet. Maybe it's a symbol legend again. 
or just kind of notes on abbreviations, which I can't spell and there's no spell check in Notepad. So maybe abbreviations isn't spelt right there, but you get the gist. Um, then you'd have your 100s, which would be plan views. So your um, foundation plan, your floor plan, maybe you've got a second floor. Um, anything like that would fall under the 100 designator. And so that would be the same thing. So like S101 would be, or this would be easier to type this way. Like S101 would be like your foundation plan. A101 would be your first floor plan. If you've got maybe multiple levels, then you'd have 102, which would be your second floor plan. And then you could even have, you know, E101, which would be your electrical plan for the first floor, so on and so on and so on. So that first number designator just means that it's a plan view. Then the next two numbers are just kind of representing where does it sit kind of within how many plans that there might be. For us, we're just only going to have one floor plan, one foundation plan. But I'm sure you're going to be dealing with structures that have more than one floor and more than two rooms. Hopefully you do. Um, the 200s then are your elevations. Your 300s are your sections. Your 400s are kind of large scale drawings. So maybe if you have something where it's zoomed in in one particular area. Your 500s are your details. Your 600s are your schedules. Um, and then kind of between 700 and 800 if you have any of that. And schedules also, which we'll go over a lot more in Revit, are tables related to materials and finishes um, for like windows, doors, and wall finishes and stuff. Uh, 700 and 800 kind of can be user defined, so it can be based off of maybe what you have going on in your particular sets of drawings. This 900 level may be designated for like 3D drawings like isometrics or perspectives or photos, but typically this is what you'll kind of see going on. And so that's really where all of that number stuff of what's going on in our title block is coming from. And then there'll be the title or the kind of the sheet number and then the sheet name will also get included either on the general sheet or on the cover sheet, depending on how big the project is. So for something like really small, like what we're doing, we're just going to put it on the cover sheet because that'll be much easier for us and on our heads and minds. And so if you want to take a little screenshot of this part of the presentation, feel free to. Okay. So that's where this comes from. I'm just going to leave it again just as a little placeholder since these two things are going to change for every one of our drawings. There's no need to fill it in now if I'm just going to have to change it for each one. So now let's look around for our drawings in the viewport. So this right here is a viewport into model space, which if I hit delete, oh no, it goes bye bye which isn't great. We don't want that. So it is easy to get your views back if you do get rid of them. The command is M view or make a view. But before I make this view, I want to make sure that I'm in the right layer because otherwise I'm going to put a big box around in the annotation layer and then my viewport will print and then I'll be sad. So I'm going to switch my layer over would it technically matter if I use def points or a anno view? Technically, no, because both of them don't print, but I just want to use a anno view because that's the absolute technically correct thing to do. And I'm going to type in m view to make a view, and I'm just going to go from one point 
to another point. And now I have a viewport into model space. If I double click inside that box, it gets highlighted. Um, so it kind of has that bold black line. That means now I'm currently in model space. There's other ways I can confirm I'm in model space. As I scroll, my page is staying the same size, but my drawings are getting bigger and smaller. The other way I can confirm is that the obvious that it's bolded. And then the third way is that it says model right down here. If I want to get out of model space and back into paper space, there's a couple of ways I could do it. One is to double click outside the viewport. So if I double click over here, now it's no longer bolded around the edge. Now it says paper. Now when I scroll, it just makes the paper bigger or smaller. The other way that you can get in and out of model space or paper space is to use the keyboard shortcuts. MS, enter, brings me into the viewport. PS, enter, brings me into paper space. Or I can click on the word paper, click on the word model to switch back and forth. So there's a bunch of ways you could do it. I typically do the double click method. The only thing that can get you in trouble is if you're zoomed in to your model space too much. So currently I'm in paper space, but if I double click, I'm now in model space. I can tell because it has my options up here and it says model. So now I can't double click out of it to exit. And so that's where clicking on here or using the keyboard shortcut PS can come in handy. My recommendation is just when you're in paper space, don't zoom in real close. There's no need to. And other than your title block, you shouldn't be doing any of your line work or anything in paper space as well. So I'm going to double click inside my viewport and I'm just going to check on some of my things to kind of set my drawing up for printing. So the first thing I'm going to do is just find the drawing that I want, um, which is why I like to have, again, all of my views nice and lined up with each other. It makes it a little easier to organize them, put enough space between them as well, so that way everything can be kind of nice and even and organized. Have I said nice and even and organized enough? Who knows? And now I'm going to adjust the scale. So. I'm going to click right here where I've got this really weird number because that's just how far scaled out I am currently. And I'm going to adjust it to a quarter inch equals a foot. And it'll adjust the scale for me. And I'm going to type in the command regen to help regenerate the line weights in case they got a little messed up as well. Other things I could do too is I can change um, things for just this viewport. And so that is where some of like these freeze and things come in. So we've looked at turning lines on and off, but there's also options to freeze and thaw. And so the little sun freezes and thaws um, in all viewports. So this is then making it that essentially the same thing that all of those lines are currently just hidden away and now they're thawed out, so now they're all visible. This option makes it so that it's just in this viewport, those are gone. So if I double click outside of here and I go into model space, those lines still exist, so they're still here currently in model space. If I make another sheet with another viewport, they'll still be visible, but it's just that they're currently not visible in this viewport. So using this can be sometimes beneficial to help maybe hide different parts of your drawings that you don't want visible just in one viewport, but in other views on other sheets, you do want them. So I've got my scale set. I can move my drawing around carefully. I can pan it, but I wanna be careful that I don't accidentally change my zoom because if I accidentally change my zoom, I have to come back here and reset it. If I do, it's not the end of the world, but I just kind of want to make sure I'm not messing anything up. So when I pan around, I'm just being careful. I did another regenerate just in case. 
And then there's kind of two schools of thought for how you can center your drawings. I like to go with what I call the wing it method. <laughs> Very technical, I know. Um, in which I kind of just pan it around until it looks like it's about centered on the sheet or the viewport is sitting about where I want it to be. And then double click outside to exit it. Or what I can do is in the death point layer, I can draw a line in paper space. So why did my line tool not start? I don't know, but L, enter. And I'm just going to draw a line diagonally across the sheet. And then in model space, I'll do it. I want to like center the view itself, not necessarily this part. I'm going to center the view. So I'm going to draw another line diagonally across here. Both of these black lines aren't going to print, so it's OK. And then I can either move the viewport or move the view itself so that way the midpoints of these two sit nice and lined up with each other. So my way that I typically work, and I know this is not a, the best way to do it, um, but as long as I'm doing everything in the right layer, then what I'm doing isn't wrong. But people have chastised me for it before, but you know what? It works for me is that I take the grips of the viewport and I shrink it down so that it's only just having what I want in my drawing. This also is a good tip too, that if, let's say for instance, I had a bunch of line work up here that I just didn't, um, like maybe I had another view that was too close to my current one. So if I just copy all this, and I put it straight on top of here. And like, oh no, now it's showing in this current view, but I don't want it in this view. That's gonna look really weird. I can just grab these group, these viewport grips and I can just make it smaller and it's almost like they never existed. Um, the better way would be to just move your views so that they are further um, spaced out. But I don't know. I like my little method of just making tiny viewports. So now that I have the viewport highlighted, I'm going to go into the move tool. And for my end point, I'm going to shift right click or for my base point, rather, I'm going to shift right click and choose midpoint and then just hover over this diagonal and click on it. So I get the middle of that one. And then for my second point, I'm again going to shift right click midpoint and say I want this diagonal. And now it has my view centered on that drawing. Um, another way too is that you can just put an overall bounding box around everything in the drawing. So like including the title block, you could center it or rather including the view title and like the graphic scale. So I could go into model space and just draw a big box all the way around kind of everything that would be included and center it around that rather than just on the view. It kind of is ultimately gonna be up to you of how you want to do that. Um, I like this method. Also too, if having that grid there is bugging the bejesus out of you, the grid um, doesn't print. So you can have that kind of comfort in your head. But if you double click inside your viewport, you can turn the grid off in model space so that way you don't see it. And then I can get rid of that line. I can get rid of this line. I could technically keep them in there too. There's no harm in them. Which, oh, I see why. I was like, why didn't it go away? Because it was on my weird copy up here. <laughs> there we go. So I could get rid of them. Um, I personally, like I've said, I don't mind seeing this box here in AutoCAD for my viewport, purely because I know that I have it in the right layer. I know it's not gonna print out, so I really don't care, but I have seen it irk people before. And so if it is something that bugs you, just make sure your views are for far enough apart so that way you can keep your viewports 
at the size of that. And let me delete this up here. Boom. So now I would go in and change in my title block. So for the title of this, this is the foundation and framing plan. And I am going to just have to move this one text box up for this guy and maybe even out a little bit more because it wasn't fitting. And for sheet number, I'll just double click on here. So this is a structural sheet. It is a plan view and it's the first one. It's also going to be the last one. So that's where that comes from. Structural, it's a plan and it's drawing number one out of all of our structural plans. It's also the end of our structural plans. Now, I'll right click on here. I'm gonna rename it so that way I just know like that this is the foundation. And now I'm gonna make a copy of it and then do the same thing like with my floor plan, with my elevations, with my uh, sections and I'll be good to go. So I'm gonna right click on it down here, select move or copy, and then I'm just gonna say create a copy and move to end. And it, now I have a sheet called foundation two. And so I'll right click on it, rename, and this one I'm gonna call floor plan. You can also name these as like the actual sheet designators so like you could name this s101 a101 um, for a small project like this i would just call them exactly what they're looking at to make it a little easier for you to understand but if i had a big project and i have a lot of different paper space tabs down here it might be a little too much to look at kind of all at once and so now i can double click inside my viewport to activate model space again Go find my floor plan, change my scale to a quarter inch equals a foot, which we can see that it barely moved. So actually I'm going to go back just to kind of show you like, cause my scale is currently set at almost a quarter inch equals a foot, but it's not exactly at that. So that's why even though it's going to barely, like you can almost not see it move at all but it kind of ever so slightly zoomed itself in. Um, so I wanna make sure that it's set the way I want to, that it's centered on the sheet, which again, you can do using my, my eyeball method technique in which I close one eye and I just kind of say, yeah, that looks about centered. Or you can use the technique to measure out exactly where it needs to go. Once you think everything's set that it needs to be set at, just double check down here. Just look down here to just double check that you didn't accidentally scroll or change the zoom around. Either use PS to go back into paper space or double click outside the viewport. And now you'll change your title to floor plan, which whoops, there we go floor plan, click outside the text box to close it, change the sheet number to A101, click out to close it, and then now I'll just move this title back down a little bit. Whoops. Oh, please stop snapping all. So again, too, if object snaps are bugging you, because right now object snaps are bugging me, F3 to turn them off. F3 to turn them back on or click on this button here. Sometimes they are they are more helpful than they are hurtful, but sometimes they could be very hurtful. Um, again, too, if you have any line work in here that maybe you just want to double check that your line type scale is set, you can also do regen, double click outside to close. You really shouldn't be doing really too much line work or any addition or anything in actual paper space itself. And then for the elevations, right click, 
on one of these. You could do foundation or floor plan. Move or copy. Move to end. Check off, create a copy. And then rename, and I'll call this one South Elevation. And now I've got the foundation and the floor plan, and now I'll do the south elevation. So I'll double click inside the viewport to activate it. Go find my south elevation. Once I find it, I'll set my scale. Quarter inch equals a foot even though that really didn't change it much. So I'll zoom out a lot just so we can see how much it does it should change. Like we should see it, our scale set. Carefully pan it into place. And then either PS enter to exit model space or double click outside. Go to your title block, change the title. You, whoops, I'm not in caps. South elevation, which I'll move this grip up a little bit since it wasn't fitting on there. And then the sheet number. So, whoops, I've got both of them selected. That's why it wouldn't let me double click. So, X out of that, hit escape. Because I had this and this selected, and I was trying to double click into here to change it, it wasn't gonna open up the text editor. So I could double click here. It's still an architectural sheet, but this time it's an elevation and it's 201, or is this one 202, depending on how I numbered them. Let, let me look. So yeah, that's 201, that's 202. You could technically do 201 as this west elevation. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot my cardinal directions for a second. But you could do this as 201 and this is 202. Um, to me, it would make more sense because this is technically the front of the house or the structure. So for have it to be this one first. But ultimately, you can do them in whatever order you want. And then I would right click, make a copy, set it, set it up, move to end, create a copy, OK, go to the copy, rename it, change the view. And I would do that for all of the views. And then I have everything set up for orienting my drawings. Um, the next step then, which is the next video we'll do on Monday of next week, is within that page set up um, adding in like the color plot table and then how we would do either a single print or what's called a batch plot um, so there's two different options of how you could print it out how you can add in some of the other projects or assignments we've worked on for extra credit to this set of plans as well um, Oh, and of course, whoops, I'm forgetting too, our cover sheet. I thought I was done and I was like, I, I knew this was going to be a shorter one, but I was just like, well, it was way too short. Not that the cover sheet will take a long time. So let's make a cover sheet too. So I'm going to right click on foundation, move or copy. I'm just going to say create a copy. And there it is. I'll right click, rename. I'm in caps lock cover on our cover sheet we're actually going to take this viewport and delete it we don't want any viewports on our cover sheet and for our title title is going to be cover cover sheet and so again i'll just click on this one move it down which it's snapping annoyingly so f3 to turn my snaps off so that way they stop bugging me for my sheet number for this one is going to be, whoops, double click on it. It's going to be COV. My scale, I'll double click on it, is NTS, 
not to scale. There is not going to be actually any drawings or anything on my sheet. It did, the size got switched a little bit, so I'm just going to change it to, what size is it supposed to be? An eight. But the date, my name, the project, my major, that's not going to change at all. Um, and so now I am going to add some text to just paper space for just this cover sheet. So I'm going to switch my layer over to Anno. And I'm going to start with just creating kind of a kind of little like cover line here. I've got to hit F3 to turn my snaps back on because I just want it lined up with here. I didn't exactly click directly on that point. I just hovered over it to go over a little bit. Not any exact amount. Same thing over here. I didn't click on that point, but I just hovered over it for a reference. And then I'm just going to put big text up here. Two ways I could do it is I could use the text tool or I could take this text box, copy it from there to not quite there, but there. And I'll say, whoops. Oh, I keep Xing out of things. Hopefully, is the recording still going, please? Yay. Um, and I'm just going to call it a small building sample. I'm going to ignore the fact that it's all not on one line because that's an easy fix. Click outside of it. Click on the text box. And if I go onto this column with here, I can make it bigger. Next is I'm going to add in my index. So again, I'm just going to borrow one of these text boxes that already exist. Copy. Click someplace to start it. Click where I want to just make a copy of it, which I'm just going to kind of free float it there and I'll make it a little bit wider before I even start. And then double click on it. Index to drawings. And I'll delete that little top part. And I don't want the rest of this bolded, so I'll come up here to my text options and I'll just say unbold. So the first thing is our cov, which is our cover sheet. Then you are going to have the ability to add in some drawings for extra credit. So if you are intending to do that, you're, it's the site plan and the wall section we can add into this set of plans for extra credit. So that would be, if you're adding those in, we've got C101, which is our site plan. But if you're not going to add the site plan in, then please do not add it in on your index of drawings. We have our structural plan or our framing foundation and framing plan. We've got A101, our floor plan. We've got A201, which starts our building elevations. And so we don't have to list each one of them. We can just say that that starts the building elevations. A301 building section, which I just realized I spelled foundation wrong. And A311 um, which is our wall section. And so we don't call it A302 because that would insinuate that it's another type of building section. So that's why we give it a different middle number or secondary number is to designate that this is a new type of section. But if you're not doing the wall section, then don't include it. Or if you're not going to include the wall section in this set of um, drawings, then don't include it in your index. And I'm just going to change the line spacing on these two to just make them a little bit more spaced. And now I've got a cover sheet. How difficult. Um, I'm also going to move these down. I don't like how high up, how up they are. So I'm just going to move it down. 
hover over that. Looks a little bit better there. And so, of course, you would still have to do it. You'd have to set up your, your west elevation and your section view. And then you'll be ready for next week to moving on to that step. So for today's stuff, make sure you have all of your drawings finished and done and ready to go. Try to match them up as best as you possibly can to the examples that I've given. Set up all your sheets and then you're ready to go for next week. And I'll see you or I'll talk to you then.